Hey folks, this is Ela, and I'm going to talk to you about inks, and I'm going to review Viviva color sheets. So, what am, what is special about inks? What is this about? Well, usually when I talk about watercolor, I'm referring to a pasty substance that is made with a ground-up pigment. It has little chunks, little particles of color that are suspended in gum arabic or some sort of gooey substance that essentially glues those pigments onto the paper. And sometimes those pigments are so big you can see them and that's when I talk about granulating that's what I'm referring to as granulation. Now this is something different. This is dye based. What is a dye? A dye is a substance that is absolutely and completely water soluble. It is the same thing that you get in a pen, right? There's no chunks in your pen, right? It's if you, if you draw with your pen, you don't see little particles, right? It's just, that's the color that it is. And some inks are waterproof and some inks will bleed if you get them wet but they tend to be very bright and intense. And uh, they, these Viva color sheets have more in common with marker ink than they do with watercolor. So I'm just gonna open this up and show you. These are, this is a fun set. It's very pretty. It's very fun to play with. You can see the colors dissolve very quickly I just touched that a few times and bam, I've got a really intense color. You know, I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna do a blue and I'm gonna do a comparison. I think the colors in this set are all essentially related to magenta with some yellow in here for the reds. And then all of the blues are very similar to thalo blue, which is almost an ink. It's very similar to an ink. If I get these wet, I can't remove this color. Once it's on there, it's it's on there. It's stained the paper and it will stain your brush. Of course, now it looks like it's wanting to lift. There it is. There's a line on the left that doesn't want to come out. So it will stain your clothes. It will stain your fingers, but it will also fade with light exposure. So temporarily, they're very intense and very staining, but in the long term, they will fade. On the other hand, when you're dealing with pigment, those little chunks, so I've got some cobalt blue here. It's a very different shade of blue. I let it soak for a while so it's intense. But if I get this wet, you can actually sort of see the texture of the paper. And the reason why you can see the texture of the paper is you're seeing those little chunks of pigment settling into the little valleys in that paper. This paper is very textured. Whereas up here, you don't see any of that texture at all because that color is completely water soluble. It just disappears. It's just like the, the water and the color are one. There are no chunks of anything in ink, ink, watercolor paint, granulated watercolor paint. So watercolors that don't granulate just have more finely ground pigment. The pigment is small enough that it doesn't do this, but this is like an extreme example. So how do you, is it, is it a problem? No, you can, you know, can, can, should you use these? Sure, if you want to, you just have to be cool with the fact that they are not permanent. They will, they will, they're kind of messy. They're very, very colorful, um, but they will fade, but they do make really beautiful colors. I did this picture with this set uh, and it's, it's a little tricky to control, 
It's nice to have dedicated brushes for each color. Maybe a dedicated brush that's just clean water if you want to get a lighter area. It, it just, it really wants, these, these colors are like divas. There's no backup singers. They all want to be the star. Here's an example of some swatches. Oops. So these are the Viviva color sheets, and you can see how the colors just extend for a long time. It's, it's kind of hard to dilute it. I finally managed to do it with these blues a little bit. And it tended to make the same colors over and over again when I tried to mix them together. So red and green make brown. Purple and yellow also made the exact same shade of brown. That would never happen with watercolor because with watercolor you have different pigments making each color. So this is a very different color than this, right? They're sort of neutral, but they're different. They have different personalities. And you can see how I can go through the whole range of most intense to most diluted in a much smaller area. So it's easier to control traditional watercolor than ink based. Here's, here's me trying to do a little picture with the ink. You can tell immediately this is ink. Bam, really intense. You can tell immediately that's watercolor. I can get really pale colors and I can get grays and beiges and very neutral areas. So they're just fundamentally very different. If I try to do a watercolor type picture with ink, I try to get a really soft neutral painting of a house and this is what I got. I'm not, not crazy about it. I tried to mix a gray directly on the paper. Nope, that red dyed the paper and uh, it's just not gonna, I can't lift it up, I can't tone it down. That's what it's doing now. So I hope that helps you understand the difference between ink and, and if you look around there are other products that contain ink rather than pigments so uh, there's a brand called ink tents that make watercolor pencils they also make uh, paint sets and they're going to behave more like these um but uh you know you can you can if you have money to spend go ahead and play around try things out if and uh you know i am biased towards traditional watercolor but uh, that doesn't mean you can't enjoy yourself and have fun. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, see you around.